Welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back yet again to serve up yet another Batman video, and today we're talking Batman the Animated Series for its 30th anniversary. My god, how time has flown, right? But we have uh, three new pieces of merchandise to check out by McFarlane Toys, DC Direct, and of course, Mondo Toys, and of course, McFarlane and DC Direct are basically one in and of itself now, but... Uh, yeah, just to kind of point it out. First and foremost, we have the new Walmart exclusive DC Direct X McFarlane Toys 4-pack for Batman the Animated Series. These are re-releases of prior released figures over the years from their amazing DC collectibles line. Kind of, sort of, loosely based off the Laughing Fish. That's where all four of these characters would have roughly hung out on Batman the Animated Series. Because you have Detective Harvey Bullock, Batman, Harley Quinn, and the lovable Joker. And on the back side, really nice photos of the figures. Here's the barcode. These are starting to ship out online. No word just yet if they will be in actual stores. And then, of course, continuing on, McFarlane Toys, loosely X DC Direct, even though it says it on the packaging. But again, Batman the Animated Series, front and center. And this actually has a uh, press for light feature right so that's pretty cool kind of mimics the opening credits 30th anniversary right there on the top of the box and really nice graphics all over very indicative of batman the animated series and of course on the back it shows you exactly what you're getting a mcfarlane batman the animated series figure with a nice base here's a picture of the battery compartment just in case you need it and here's the barcode as well just as an fyi these have been in the stores for quite a bit now i actually picked mine up for 12 $13, I think it was, uh, total, right? Uh, they're hitting clearance, so if you want one, you're going to like the base, just saying. And then, on the Mondo Toys Avenue for Batman the Animated Series, we're going to be taking a look at their brand new 1-6 scale Joker. And this one is the standard version, not the SDCC version that was limited to 1,000, but look at the gorgeous artwork on that if you haven't already check out mondo for all their prints all that good stuff because on the back side of this one an amazing graphic of batman the animated series right there man oh man does that look good and of course you can pull open a little flap right there and you get even more amazing artwork based on batman they're finny they're funny you know so delish they're joyful and jolly the joker fish and that is again one of the best joker episodes the animation towards the end of that episode is amazing. I like that they got the two goons and Harley. This was a tough caper for old Harley with all that fish, right? But in either case, uh, this is going to be fun. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee, maybe bust out some of that Shirley Walker music, right? Just to get the old blood pumping. This is a look at the 30th anniversary of Batman the Animated Series featuring McFarlane Toys, DC Direct, DC Collectibles, and of course, Mondo Toys. And while I got all you jokers here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my Batman videos. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. I guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Now, we're going to kick it off with Mondo Toys with their giant one-sixth scale Basically, it's an art toy in and of itself. They make really awesome adult premium collectibles. Let's just be clear, especially with the prices. But they definitely know their stuff when it comes to animated features and really recreating all those joyful moments from, let's say, Batman the Animated Series. And very clearly, yes, comes with a ton of accessories, a ton of swap out hands. So you have hands for days. And very specific hands that could recreate a lot of moments from Batman the Animated Series involving Mark Hamill's Joker. When you go back and watch the animated series, you can tell that they very clearly looked at what they're doing. The gestures, the mannerisms for the Clown Prince of Crime. And I'll show you coming up. Yes, uh, you can really swap this guy out and make it look good because he comes with two laughing fish, the terrifying laughing fish there's gonna be a lot of laughing fish in this video but overall they're really nicely painted nice big red smiles the teeth always so creepy now here is the bomb from the particular episode joker's favor and i have to say it's really well done it looks great 
Although my grievance would be in the eyes because the eyes are the countdown, right? It would go like 10, 9, and there'd be like digits instead of eyeballs. So that's maybe the only hiccup because other than that, you got really cool wires, the dynamite, everything looks great. And yeah, it's customized because that's how a Joker do. And then you got some playing cards. I like that they're all kind of stacked, but maybe a single playing card because, you know, the Joker loves throwing those. That'd be really cool. He does come with an ice pick, you know, just to be able to figure out who iced the old gang. At least that's what I'm assuming it's from, from Mask of the Phantasm. And you get the candle from Be a Clown from Jordan Hill's birthday party from that particular episode. It's nicely rendered the paint kind of goes every which way little nicks and scrapes here and there some parts on the joker aren't exactly painted the best but i get the idea of what it is and then you get a classic bomb right i would say would have been really cool to have little uh, little fire effect piece that you could kind of stick on this or the candle that would have been really nice but this to me comes from that episode was it Harley Quinnade, when the Joker steals the bomb and he throws it to the guy and it explodes, he thinks it's a real bomb and it turns into a, a gas bomb and kills him. But yeah, anyways, the Joker head portraits are very, very well done. Each of them, a very cool expression for the Joker, leaves a lot of options as far as displayability. Now, I will tell you honestly, some heads are painted better than others. It does have that really cool cell shading, which I enjoy. This one has just a few marks here and there. This head in particular is the more sinister, smiling, classic Joker. Really nicely done. Again, if you have to really look closely, just some blotches of paint here and there. Not ideal, but not a total deal breaker. But I think that they captured the smile. Big, toothy, yellow grin. This one, I have to tell you, is, is one of my favorites because... Just the expression alone. This is kind of from, you could say, the man who killed Batman. Or when he's upside down hanging, uh, Batman's going to roast him like a grilled cheese. You know, a lot of those different faces, the Charlie Collins episode, a lot of them where he's just freaked out or just kind of mimicking it. But the good old classic Joker, the clown prince of crime himself right here, the smiling, laughing, insanity is really brought forward in this head portrait and I think that this is probably the best one and the one that you're probably most likely to display him with although I gotta tell you it's a lot of fun to swap these out I was consistently doing that but from all angles this one is awesome and you do get a fair amount of articulation one thing with let's say the Bruce Tim designs just those characters alone if you put too many points of articulation in the action figures they're based off of, it really starts to break up that really linear type of straight line design. And right here, I have to say, this is the Joker's hand buzzer. As far as the hand buzzers go, of what I can remember, it was in Batman versus Superman when he started electrocuting Superman, right? When he had the kryptonite. Although in the Joker's favor episode, he had more of a sharp point sticking out when he went to go shake his hand. So I kind of would have preferred that over the hand buzzer, just, just as a thought. But again, the articulation really doesn't break up too much of the sculpt. You have to think of this more as Mondo makes these more high-end art pieces. It is basically a giant action figure, but it is well done. It's well painted for the most part. Again, like I said, there's some hiccups here and there. The articulation may not be for everyone. You may be thinking, oh, for that price point, I should be getting... 30, 50, 70 points of articulation. For me, no, this actually works really well. I mean, you even have some articulation in his spats right there that kind of rock and move up and down. So plenty of articulation that doesn't break up the character. You know what I mean? But I think where Mondo really shines is attention to detail and with all the different accessories. Like, we'll say, the hand buzzer outstretching his hand hey give him old shake or offering the gangster the bomb right in terms of uh, getting the nuclear bomb that would have been again just so cool if this bomb kind of opened up and it had the little gas canister and joker guy in there that would have been awesome the playing cards is nice but as i'll say again maybe some single cards would have been ideal the joker fish right that's straight out of the cartoon, the way he holds it, talking about how Colonel Wessets has chicken and they don't even have mustaches when he's trying to get the money out of G. Carl Francis. 
The ice pick he holds in his hand. He kind of only holds it this way. You can't get it going the other way, going down. But right here, in terms of the man who killed Batman, giving his eulogy, which is one of the best best scenes from Batman the Animated Series, and telling everybody to slap him into that box there and send him into that vat of acid there. So you get the idea. Very, very cool. You got the bomb right there that he sticks on Commissioner Gordon. It's very well done. And just, again, to show you the size, these are one six scale. They're going to be giant action figures. But dang it all, does it look nice. Again, these are our pieces in and of itself. They are on the higher price point end, but they're very, very well done. Now, moving into McFarlane Toys with the four-pack for the Laughing Fish. I'll tell you again, these are reissues of prior released DC Direct, DC Collectibles, Batman the Animated Series figures, but I don't have any of those, and I'm stoked to have these. Now, first and foremost, Harley Quinn comes with her little Harley wand, and again, this is from Harley Quinnade. Most specifically, she shoots the tip off that, it ends up bonking the Joker in the head, knocks him out, they're able to save the day, and uh, it's pretty cool. That would have been really cool if these two disassembled, though, right? You do get a couple extra hands. The black hands are pretty solid. The red hands were black at some point, and they painted them red, and you can kind of see it's already got some chippage going around. That's just from moving around the wrists, right? Harley Quinn, very lovely interpretation of the character. Really works well. Again, I really regret not collecting these and picking these up. I have the original Kenners, the Hasbros, the Mattels, but I never got into these. The sculpt on this, now I don't know how the first release kind of went, but she gets a little gappy in the joints. They don't exactly line up. I thought maybe that was a painted in line, like you see how she has white lines and whatnot to accent that art style, but no, it's just, it's kind of weird. It don't exactly fit together. The articulation for what she has is nice. The shell shading is nice. Again, I'm one of those people where I like it when it works, and I think they went above and beyond in terms of the cell shading, even putting little white lines amidst the black. She doesn't stand worth a dang. I'm just going to tell you, she's got no peg holes. The articulation in the head works. The arms just go really easy towards the elbows, just to make sure nothing snaps. She's very, very thin joints. She's a very tiny figure. Nothing at the waist, but she sort of kicks off to the side. That's where I think it has too much articulation right i know they're trying to do we are articulating everything else some of the paint ain't so great amidst the joints as i kind of pointed out previously but overall i'm very happy to have these i don't know necessarily if they're going to start re-releasing all of them but if this was it uh, i'd be more than stoked just to have these four now going from harley to harvey Bullock, you get a pair of handcuffs right here. Those are nicely done, very well rendered. You can put these on any of the figures. You can even just slip out the hands, put it over the wrists, and it totally works. Nice chain right there for the handcuffs. You get some donuts. One of them's eaten. One of them has yet to be eaten by Harvey Bullock, right? Remember that with Farmer Brown? He's like, he ate my donut. I love that scene. Not so much the episode, though. And then you get a couple extra hands. Unfortunately, minus the donuts, minus the handcuffs, he doesn't come with a gun or anything else that you would love a cop like Harvey Bullock to come from. Now, I have a few grievances with this guy. First and foremost, I would say the cell shading is a little bit too much. It's not bad. It's not great. And also the head sculpt right here. That's more new Batman adventures, the way they painted it with the dark underlined eyes. I know these art styles, like the back of my hand, I know the shows and everything else. That is more the new adventures, Harvey, with the colors and the body of Batman the Animated Series, if that makes any sense. So he's kind of all over the place in that way, but for creating a Harvey Bullock figure, not one that I didn't know I ever really needed, like I said, the, the cell shading is what it is. It's a little bit overdone. Sometimes it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But for what is there, it, it's okay. Articulation, he's a bit of a brick of a figure. I would say go really easy in the arms. Some of them are kind of stuck initially. Nothing I had to heat up. But just something to keep in mind. The legs are pretty solid. He has weird cuts, right? Not so much of a, a waist swivel. The little tiny legs, his little hooves. <laughs> 
Don't get me wrong. He's a nice looking figure. It's nice to have Harvey Bullock from Batman the Animated Series. It just has some issues here and there. But you know who doesn't? Well, the old laughing fish, of course. So this one, as opposed to like the Mondo, obviously is a very smaller laughing fish. I think it's well done. Nicely painted. A little bit of the green, the white, the yellow eyes. It looks like it flopped right out of the episode. And then, of course, Joker comes with a dozen extra hands doing all kinds of stuff, but no weapons, no guns. He just comes with the fish. However, what he lacks in accessories, he more than makes up for in terms of the head portrait and the body. And I really like the way that this looks. The head portrait is sinister. It's terrifying. You could even say it's kind of the head portrait from Batman Mask of the Phantasm a little bit. Kind of sort of the ending animation from The Laughing Fish. But I really like the eyes. The one thing I would say about the teeth, it looks like they just stuck around with the red paintbrush and used the red to kind of paint the spaces between the teeth instead of using black. I would have preferred black. It kind of looks like his mouth is like a little bloody. You know what I mean? He's got various cell shading every which way on the underside of the arms and then around his lapels and everything else. As much as he's more of a limited articulation figure, which again, I don't mind he has a hard time standing from time to time his odd spat shoes kind of work against him a little bit he's more back heavy than anything but uh yeah that's a sinister creepy looking joker and again very happy one that they went with this particular portrait and i think that overall the cell shading makes for a great action figure but i'm going to tell you my favorite out of the box set it is of course batman himself with various gadgets. I really like that the bat grapnel is sculpted into his hand. And I've been thinking about that recently. I wouldn't mind more accessories just sculpted into the hands. I think that it would help. I end up leaving accessories in the hands all the times, but you got various weapons. You got batarang holding hands. The batarang, I'm going to tell you, that's an odd colored piece right there. It's like two-toned. However, happy to say that the hand for the batarang actually holds the batarang quite nicely so no problems there but i'll tell you batman himself is very well done the proportions of the dark knight this is the figure that i've been wanting since the kenner days this is great he's got one peg hole on the bottom of his foot right there on the right hand side but as you can see the the tension to detail the sculpt everything matches up for batman the head gets a little sloppy with some of the paint I'm not too stoked on the way the mouth is, but overall, yeah, I'm very happy with this guy. The articulation, not too much, not overly articulated, but just enough to do all the Batman posings that I want. I know that some of the previous DC collectible animated offerings can be kind of brittle, so that would be my warning to you. Just go easy, especially in the legs. They kind of make me nervous. Usually when you start to kind of get them going, you really have no problems. Double jointed knees, you get a little articulation in the feet and in the boots. So overall, I would tell you just, again, go easy. It's just a matter of taking your time, maybe heat them up a little bit. The cape looks great. I love the blue on the underside, black, and you got a little bit of that cell shading going on. So this is essentially, this is like one of the best Batman animated series figures ever. The one caveat to everything is I don't like the way they painted the trunks. They're too high right here. It bugs me. Some people might look at that and go, come on, man, you just nitpick it. But it's just something I see, and now I can't unsee. It should have been cut a little bit more, something like maybe drop that line down a little bit more because I think that it's too high. But other than that, with the accessories, the sculpted in detail, everything else, uh, that's one fine-looking Batman the Animated Series figure and that being said going from that batman to now this batman you know <laughs> it's like night and day right now there are some good things about this most specifically the base i'm just gonna be quite honest with you especially the light up feature which i absolutely love so we'll turn the lights off here and i'll show you firsthand that's awesome that is exactly the batman how it looks even the buildings in the back right when the lightning strikes you get no credits. You just instantly know that it's Batman. And it looks good. So in that sense, I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't want to watch any more of this particular segment, just buy it for the base. You'll be very happy. He comes with the exact same accessories that you've seen with other releases of this Batman. I really wish 
you could have taken out this part of the grapnel because that's a cool looking grapnel. They did a great job there. The battering, not so much. It's still too big. It's very clumsy. It's oddly painted. It's got some oil paint in there. You get two extra hands. You got some of that cell shading on there. The Batman himself, this is the exact same figure we've already seen released twice. Same head, same body. The only new part is this really gorgeous cape. I'm going to tell you honestly, that's a fantastic cape. That's the only new piece to this whole thing besides the base, but they nailed it. That's a great looking cape. The body proportions, I don't need to get into it. You've heard me say it a dozen times. When this figure first released, I was like, okay, it's fine. Yeah, you know, I haven't had a Batman the Animated Series figure in a while. But then as you look at it, as you look at it compared to even DC collectibles and everything else, you go, yeah, it's it's too far off. Again, the cape, really well done. But you see all the different cuts, all the articulation points in this Bruce Tim style. And it really clusters it. But we'll put him to the side and look at this really gorgeous base. Now, if you've collected Batman the Animated Series figures all these years... Definitely get this for the base. And I would say wait till you get it on clearance. You might even be able to get it uh, right now in your stores. On the bottom, you get to see it's got three different switches, on, off, and try me. So right now it's on try me. You can put it on on, off. I'll show you what that looks like. Battery cover, replacement, all that. If you put it on on, yeah, it just stays on all the time. I don't know why you'd want it on all the time. I just like pushing the button. I think that that looks... Better, you can turn it off, or like I said, just leave it on try me mode, and you could just do it that way. It's got the cool blue lightning, really nice paint on the buildings, very angular, very much that dark deco art style from Batman the Animated Series. So the best part about this set is the base. Hands down, you gotta get it uh, for the base. So we'll just do this. We'll turn the lights off, and I'll show you each Batman on this base. So you have the one that it came with, Cape looks good, right? In the dark, it looks a lot better. <laughs> it's just not a great Batman. Here's the DC Collectibles one, right? That looks pretty good. Although it just doesn't have the billowing cape. See, the billowing cape makes it. And then you have the original Kenner. And that, to me, just that. Right then and there, man, oh, man. Because the Kenner one, that still holds up tremendously. And then, of course, you got the new Batman Adventures just for kicks, right? Even though he don't... Do it Now, you can see the difference between all three of these Batmans. And the first release, we'll just say, is kind of sort of... It's a mishmash of Batman the Animated Series, Justice League, Batman, Justice League Unlimited, and the colors. You know what I mean? You start to see everything. He also had a yellow emblem. This new Batman with the cape has an orange emblem. And then you have this Batman where maybe he got hit with a car light and he was all in blue at one point but as you can clearly see if you want to do the bat math here this plus this equals the mcfarland one in very many ways you know what i mean so you can see where they were kind of combining things but i'll tell you right now just to kind of show you what's come before what you're getting now the newest iteration for the 30th anniversary mcfarland you definitely missed it on that one but the base is killer that's all I got in that sense. With prior release DC Collectibles Joker, I think that uh, eh, the head portrait on this one, you know, they've really improved with this four-pack box set. I'm just going to say. That's one tremendous head sculpt. And I do have the Catwoman when they kind of re-released these most recently. And she goes very well with this Batman the Animated Series Batman. So I have to tell you, from just getting this new box set and getting all four figures, it was about, it was a hundred bucks. They really nailed it. From all the accessories for really what all these figures go for now, I'm not going to go back and collect the line. That's just not going to happen if for some reason I came across them for a good price Without looking, well, that's a different story. But for just having these, for having this Batman, for putting him on this base, for putting it all in my Detolf shelf for my Batman the Animated Series collection, yeah, the box set is definitely a home run. Definitely recommend it. So that will wrap it up for my look at all these brand new Batman the Animated Series figures by various companies. And thank you to Mondo for sending out the Joker for the purpose of this video. Lots of great 30th anniversary tie-ins. 
What was your favorite? You've heard my thoughts. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Batman the Animated Series. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, even though it's been 30 years, man, oh, man. Does Batman the Animated Series still hold up? It is still one of the best cartoons ever made. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.